Thank you for your word tonight, Lord. We ask that you guide us. Speak to ask the Lord to speak to you tonight. Father, we are grateful for your word. We are grateful for your spirit guiding us. Thank you for your blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Turn to Acts chapter 10. It says, Now there was a man at Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian cohort, a devout man and one who feared God, with all his household, and gave many alms to the Jewish people, and prayed to God continually. And he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God who had just come in and said to him, Cornelius. And fixing his gaze on him, And being much alarmed, he said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Amen. Now dispatch some men to Joppa and send for a man named Simon, who is also called Peter. He is staying with a tanner named Simon. When the angel who was speaking with him had left, he summoned two of his servants. All right. And um, verse 9 says, On the next day, as they were on their way, Peter went up to the house top at about the sixth hour to pray. Amen. But he became hungry and was desiring to eat. But... While they were making preparations, he fell into a trance. And he saw the sky opened up and an object like a great sheet coming down, lowered by four corners to the ground. And there were in it all kinds of four-footed animals and crawling creatures of the earth and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, no, by no means, Lord, I have never eaten anything unholy and unclean. This happened three times, and immediately the object was taken up into the sky. Now, while Peter was greatly perplexed in mind as to what the vision which he had seen might be, behold, the men who had been sent by Cornelius, having asked direction for Simon's house, appeared at the gate. And calling out, they were asking whether Simon, who was also called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was reflecting on the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, Three men are looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and accompany them without misgivings, for I have sent them myself. Peter went down to the men and said, Behold, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for which you have come? And they said, Cornelius, a centurion, a righteous and God-fearing man, well spoken of by the entire nation of the Jews, was divinely directed by an angel to send for you to come to his house and hear a message from you. So he invited them in and gave them lodging. On the next day, he got up and went away with them. And some of the brethren from Joppa accompanied him. On the following day, he entered Caesarea, now Cornelius was waiting for him, for them, and had called together his relatives 
and close friends. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter raised him up, saying, Stand up. I, too, am a just man. As he talked with him, he entered and found many people assembled. And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a man who is a Jew to associate with a foreigner or even to visit him. And yet God has shown me that I should not call any man unholy or unclean. Amen. That is why I came without even raising any objection when I was sent for. So I asked for what reason you have sent for me. Cornelius said, four days ago to this hour, I was praying in my house during the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in shining garments. And he said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your arms have been remembered by God. Is it not powerful that your prayers are heard and your arms or your giving is remembered? These are two powerful things you can do in your life. To be able to make contact with God and to be able to make an impact in heaven is to pray and to give. When you want to touch God and make God do something or try to send a message to God, these are two powerful things you can do. You can pray and then you can give. And he says, your prayers have come up and your arms have been remembered. May, may God direct you in prayer. And may he direct you also in giving. Giving is a kind of prayer. Sometimes when you need a breakthrough and an answer or help, sometimes you should let God lead you to give a special offering in a particular direction. You'll be surprised how that special offering will make a difference to your life and to your ministry. Amen. Right. So, um, verse 32. Therefore, send to Joppa and invite Simon, who is called Peter, to come up to you. He is staying at the house of Simon the Tanner by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and, I, and you have been kind enough to come to me. Now then, we are all here present before God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. Amen. And opening his mouth, Peter said, Wow, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality. Amen. Amen. God is not one to show partiality. God is not partial. Or the King James says, God is not a respecter of persons. But God is not one to show partiality. So we should always try not to be partial. If you have things to do, try to do the same thing for as many people as possible so that you are not being partial. Amen. What do you think? Is it a good idea? Right? Then it says, but in every nation. In every nation. Amen. Every single nation. Right? The man who fears God and does what is right is welcome to him. Amen. That means in every nation, God can use you and God can listen to you. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? God can listen to you. God can hear you. God can bless you no matter the country which you come from. That means God can use people in every nation. If you do what is right and you fear God, God can use somebody from every country 
You don't have to be American before God will use you. Amen. Amen. You don't have to be a Nigerian before God will use you. You can also be a Ghanaian. Amen. You don't have to be South African before God can use you. Because God uses people in every nation. Amen. So, that's a powerful revelation. Now, the word which he sent to the sons of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You yourselves know the thing which took place throughout all Judea, starting from Galilee after the baptism which John proclaimed. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all the things he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him up on the third day and granted that he become visible. Wow. But not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen beforehand by God. That is, to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. May you have an opportunity to eat and drink in the presence of holy men of God. Amen. And he ordered us to preach to the people solemnly to testify that this is the one who has been appointed by God as judge of the living and of the dead. Of him, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Amen. Now, I want you to take note of this. Notice, all right? Notice. When Jesus rose from the dead, God granted that he should become visible. That is, people should see him, but not everybody saw him. Amen. Not everybody saw Jesus. I used to think, you know, if Jesus really rose from the dead, everybody should see him. You know, but one, one of the things I've come to find is God is not interested in impressing you. And even if he was to have risen from the dead for everybody to see him, Still, some people will not believe anyway. It has been shown that children who come from a house where the father beats them every day and children who come from a house where they don't beat them at, it, at all, it has been shown that the good ones become good and the bad ones become bad. So they, they, they don't even know what causes the goodness or the badness, whether the whippings, and the no whipping seem to have the same effect. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that there are many people, even if they have a chance to see, they will not still believe. Some will see and they'll believe. You can't really tell. But God chooses to whom he will show himself. Some time ago, there were some things I really wanted to show people. But as I grew up, I, I realized that it's not important to show this person anything about the ministry. I don't even bother. You understand? Sometimes even our miracle services now, when it reaches a point when sometimes I, I don't even want to take the testimonies. Because I say to myself, it doesn't even matter. Whether they see or they hear, I don't really care. And it doesn't really change much. But you, you have to get to a point to be able to see. 
because you would have thought that Jesus really wanted to save the people. He would show, look at me. He would show the people, look at me. But he didn't bother. He appeared to his 12 disciples and a few people. And they even ate and they drank with him. Before we continue, just turn to John chapter 14. I want to show you a verse there. Judas, who is not Iscariot, he said something in John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 18. It says, Are you there? I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. Amen. And I will love him and I will disclose myself to him. What does the King James say? I will manifest. This one says, I will disclose myself to him. Now, Judas, who is not Iscariot, asked a very important question. Are you there or you are asleep? Are you here or you are sleeping? Okay. You can sleep if you want. It doesn't matter. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, what has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? Have you seen that question? What has happened? What has happened that you are going to keep yourself from some people and disclose yourself to just a few people? What has happened? Are you there? See, because there comes a time... God will keep himself from you and disclose himself to some few people. Yeah. <laughs> and it also comes to life in the a, in a life of a, of a man of God that he may now keep himself to a few people and disclose himself to some and not disclose himself to another group. Why? And that's Judas, who is not Iscariot, was asking that question. Lord, what has happened? What has happened? That you are going to keep yourself. You will not disclose yourself to these people, but you disclose yourself to these people. What has happened that you are now so far? When you would have been close. Lord, what has happened that you have divided the sheep into the close ones and the far ones? The answer is in the next verse. And Jesus answered and said to him, Lord, uh, no. And Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And not only will we disclose ourselves, we will come to him and make our abode with him. It is your love for somebody which is revealed not by saying, I love you, but by keeping the commandments. He goes on to say, he says, he who does not love me does not keep my words. Okay? So you detect love by flowing with the words of a person. If you keep telling somebody, do, 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 and he doesn't do, after a while, you should conclude that he does not love you. According to the Bible, what has happened that you are not going to disclose yourself, but you are going to disclose yourself to this? What has happened? All that has happened is if any man loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And I and my father will come to him and we will, we will stay. Wow. And that is exactly what happened when Jesus rose from the dead. He looked at those who loved him. And he decided to go to them and disclose himself to them. 
He didn't disclose himself to everybody, but he disclosed himself to those whom he, he realized loved him. Not those who were just around, but those who really loved him and kept his word. You know, this verse worries me because I think sometimes about visions and dreams. Sometimes I really want to see Jesus. And I ask myself, what is the qualification to have such a vision? And I look at my life and I, I realize that he has not disclosed himself to me in that way. Huh? Has he disclosed himself that way to you? Not yet. What has happened that he has, he has decided not to disclose himself to you? And he has decided to disclose himself to some others. Wow. Is it a powerful question? All right. So let's go back to Acts chapter 10. Peter was just sharing what he knew. Amen. Preaching is simply sharing what you know. Hallelujah. Some people think to preach, you have to come up with some special. No. He just started saying, you know, from the time of Galilee, when John was baptized up till now, you know how Jesus, how God anointed him. He went around doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And for God was with him. And then he went here and this. I mean, he just spoke what he knew. And whilst he was speaking, in verse 44, these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the message. Amen. And all the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and exalting God. Then Peter answered, Surely no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did. And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked him to stay on for a few days. Amen. Well, this scripture shows us the power of listening to preaching. Amen. Whilst Peter was preaching, the Holy Spirit fell on them. And I do believe that every time you are listening to preaching that you can understand and preaching that is entering you, the Holy Spirit comes on you. Amen. Amen. So today, I really want, you to enc- I want to encourage you to become someone whose main pastime is to listen to preaching. Amen. Amen. But before I go on to that, I sense the Spirit just uh, encouraging me to say something. So I want to do just that. You know this point at which Jesus said, uh, Peter said, now I understand, I most certainly understand that God is not one to show partiality. Everybody say, I most certainly understand. How many want to most certainly understand a lot of things now? Huh? Do you want to most certainly understand? Then you are going to have to use a combination of the vision that you have had plus what happens in your life, if you want to understand. Because when Peter saw the vision of the animals, he didn't understand what it was. He said, but when he got up, he was greatly perplexed, wondering as to what this vision meant. Then, these guys appeared on the scene and said, God has sent them. Amen. Are you there? Are you with me? He says, while Peter was reflecting on the vision, you see, wondering what it meant, you know, and and in fact, he was confused. Because Peter said, by no means. But now he was being asked to do something that he did not want to do. So ladies and gentlemen, sometimes God is directing you, but you are uncertain as to what to do. So, events are going to unfold. And those events combined with the spiritual experience that you have had and convictions that you have 
will lead you to most certainly understand. Then you'll be able to say, I now most certainly understand what the Lord is doing. It's only by coming here and seeing the events that have been unfolding from Kolegono up to here that we can say, ah, I now most certainly understand what the Lord was doing, that uh, he wanted us to move on. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? So, sometimes, you know, somebody wanted to marry you, but I didn't marry you. And then later on, somebody else comes and marries you. Then you say, oh, I now most certainly understand why the first one didn't work out. Hallelujah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, do not allow the incidents in your life to just pass by. They are powerful incidents. Amen. So, back to what I was saying, that... God wants to anoint us and to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Look, recently I was watching um, uh, an evangelist whose ministry is one of the most admirable ministries. And uh, since 1947, I believe, he's been preaching. 1947. I believe it's 1947. Right? Right? 1947. I, I, I checked it again. He has won 3 million 216 676 souls. 3 million since 1947. Right? Now, that's a lot of souls. But when you compare it with somebody who believes in the Holy Spirit in another way, and speaks in tongues, you get it, and believes in miracles. I remember him, a figure, something like 37 million, either for that year, I don't think it was for his whole life or ministry, but I think it's for that year or that period, or for a period, 37 million, and compared to 1947 to 2007, how many years? about 60 years and he had an exact figure of the number of people that have given, taken a decision for Christ. I think the Holy Spirit has a great effect on what you are doing in God. You know, I think if for no other reason, I now understand why I saw that documentary. Because that particular documentary, I was not interested in watching it. But I now, under, I now most certainly understand why I was watching that documentary. Because the Holy Spirit greatly changes you. Changes you. Even your intelligence, which is limited. You see that the Holy Spirit affects you. Hey! Somebody who listens to the word. Somebody who receives the Holy Spirit. I tell even if you lack intelligence, you will see that that intelligence will come out. Look, people who know me from school, you know, never saw any gift in me. Oku, I'm telling you. It's not that I, I, I'm just using it to say a funny story when I'm preaching. Now, sometimes people feel that I'm just trying to find a funny story to say. But I'm telling you, both in secondary school, throughout primary school, secondary school, I was never chosen to be any form of any kind of a leader. Ever, it, I mean, nobody saw any trace of any ability to lead or to do anything in me. Many of you have been prefects before. Raise your hand if you've ever been chosen, elected, made a prefect ever before. Henry, have you never been made a prefect before? Now, why don't you raise your hand? Today, I'm preaching to the prefects. Yeah. I believe it is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that makes me able to be a leader. I really believe. And then when I came into Christian circles, I was never chosen. Never. Never. I was never elected. I belong, I was, I was in action. I was never asked to do anything. I was in Calvary Road. I was never selected for anything. 
when they, when they chose the executives, I was never chosen. Hey! I mean, it, it's just like, you, you, you understand? What I'm saying is that they look at you and, and you, you, you don't impress them. Ah! But the presence of the Holy Spirit makes a lot of difference. Because God will anoint the vessel just as the vessel is. And I believe a lot of you are here, you don't have much education. But I tell you, the Holy Spirit can make a lot of difference to your life. You don't have much education, but the Holy Spirit can make a lot of difference to your life. You don't have much education. I can show you uneducated preachers. Kenneth Hagin is one. Uneducated. Yonggi Cho is another. Uneducated preachers. I can show you Benny Hinn. Uneducated preachers. I can show you Bishop Duncan Williams. Uneducated all these are men without education. Men without education. But so full of the Holy Spirit. That they, they, they become leaders and they dominate the landscape wherever they are. If I was you, I would search for the Holy Spirit. And I tell you one thing. That in this church, you know, I believe one of the great revelations that God has given us. Is that when you listen to the word of God the Holy Spirit can come on you. It's not about listening to every single word, every single tape. There are tapes that enter when you listen. You love it. You enjoy it. And you receive it. Oh, sometimes I see pastors. Unfortunately, the institution that we set up to appoint pastors couldn't see through the lack of their calling, and appointed them as pastors by mistake. Their churches don't work. Their ministries don't work. There is no grace. There's no oil. There's no unction. There's no presence. It's a dry, sandy, desert, salted land. They are not even interested. Recently, I met some students who are calling themselves elders. They will not even listen to cassettes. And they are calling themselves elders. And people pass and call them elder this, chief that. And they are receiving the praises of fools. Huh? What? Father's Day. They get texts that people... Telling them you are my father. A student. And you receive the text too. You should have returned the text to the sender. Hmm. No, today I'm just talking about Acts 10.44. I just felt I want to talk about it. A person who does not have a collection of tapes. And tape that you are listening to all the time. I mean, different ones that you are soaking in. Oh, you cannot amount to much. You don't know how to preach well. And you think you have. That's why I also want to say that if you think you are anointed, where is your fruit? We will know whether you are or not by the fruit that you have. And many of them, you understand, even they are entering a darker zone of ministry because th that's what Judas not is carried out as Lord why will you not disclose yourself to these ones anymore you some of you find yourself being more excluded and moving into the deeper darker zones why the answer is Judas not is carried out as that question Judas not is carried out asked what has happened that you are not going to disclose yourself to, 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 to the everybody, but you disclose yourself to us. That's the question that Judas not is carried out asked. <laughs> oh, there are cassettes there. One of the most popular places in the church are the kebab sellers. Kebab sellers are waiting for you. And the bookshop is the same people who buy the tapes all the time. Oh, Martha, is it not true? The same people. But the majority, they will never invest in that. 
but they have money to invest in abortion when they are pregnant. Yes. <laughs> ah, they have money for dresses. All the ladies are always wearing something new and something different. Ah, we don't have time for the word to listen to anointed men of God ministering, receiving the anointing. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Oh, my friend, look at Bishop Duncan Williams, somebody who was a beggar at the airport. When you arrive with your suitcase, he runs to you to ask whether he can push it through the Holy Spirit. This man is invited to the White House and other places and has related with the highest of all types of society. Up till today, a person without a single day of education, when you ask him what school he went, he says, I have no classmates because he has no class. No class, up to class three. He has no one that he can remember that he went to school with. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is everything. Ray McCauley, he, he saw, one day he was talking, uh, Benny Hinn came and was, he was teaching about seven steps to the anointed. People were going out, you know, and he, he, he got so angry. He was blasting the people. He said, you look at you, your, your bitty small, bitty playing game churches. You have nothing. He said, that's why God would take a bodybuilder like himself without education and use him. A bodybuilder without any education and use him to preach in a church. You should see his notes. Big words. When he's preaching, he has this paper with big words on it. <laughs> The, the points are just big letters, words. So a bodybuilder without education. You see the people, thousands, because of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, me, I believe that if you can, if, you, if, if, I, was, if I was me, and I am me, what I want more than anything is the Holy Spirit. I will continue to direct you to the Holy Spirit. And I'll continue to direct you to the anointing. The Holy Spirit will make you patient. Will make you happy. You'll be full of joy and peace. The peace you don't have in your life as you are struggling. And patience, gentleness. And the characteristics that make you nice and attractive. The Holy Spirit, as his presence is with you for a long time. You have love. Love which you don't have. No one can stay with you. Oh. I will only recommend the Holy Spirit to you. Honestly. I have a thousand things that I can teach and preach. Principles and steps and ideas. How to do this. How to do this. How to do this. How to let your business work. Step one is what? Have a plan. Number two. Have a strategy. Strategize. Number three. Re-strategize. Number four. Build a team. Number five. Write it down. Number six. Have a goal. Have smart goals. Uh, what is a smart goal? Specific, measurable, attainable, re realistic, time, time related goal. That's a smart goal. S M A R T. And then have a SWAT, SWAT, SWAT team. Avoid your, you develop your strength, avoid your weakness, uh, your, you develop, seize your opportunities, and, and, and avoid your threats. Your greatest threat. These are SWAT. Oh, and then what again? What are the other steps? Develop negotiating skills. Visualize. Develop negotiating skills. Build a team. Uh, what else? I mean, focus on the vision. Develop your core what? Competence. You see, all these are steps. We can come and share all these things. But I tell you, I tell you, there is nothing that can compare itself with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I don't have to come to stand here to say develop a team, uh, develop negotiating skills, uh, have a goal, smart goal, realistic, uh, achievable. And, oh, no, 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 no. no. Ah, it's not Gimpa. It's not Gimpa. We are in a church. 
and here the Holy Spirit can come upon you and make you the leader of all these smart people. Look, the Holy Spirit is for weak people. That is why he's called the comforter, the strengthener, the standby, the advocate, the helper. That is what the Holy Spirit is for, for weak people. And it is the weakest of all who love the Holy Spirit most. I'll show you that tape. One day, you see Benny Hinn is preaching seven steps to the anointing. When Benny Hinn decided to start praying for people, then people started walking out. Ah, he blasted. He said, what? I mean, he said, if you have a, a, a something to do, I have a thousand more things to do. As we are sitting here, we pray for people. They don't change. They don't get well. You're just walking out when the Holy Spirit anointing is here. Oh, he blasted them fully. That's why I said God would take an uneducated bodybuilder like himself without education and use him to pastor everybody and talk to Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu and all these guys internationally. Yeah. Because we don't like the Holy Spirit. So those of you who think you are educated, it's, it's not that we don't know develop smart goals and have realistic something. Develop negotiating skills and marital this thing. How to let your marriage work? Step number one is what? Uh, uh, what? Pick communication skills number two. Eh? Leave love notes number three. Send text number four. Occasional gifts number five. What? Massage number six. <laughs> number six. Weekend. Weekend getaway. Go for weekend getaways. Number seven. Take the children. Drop the children. Uh, at school uh, sometimes number eight help with house chores number nine use love language develop the five love languages number ten ah, we, we, we know all these points all these points are not helping us I say all these points are not helping us we want the Holy Ghost and we want the anointing ah! stand here and teach you how to buy a car. Number one, save. Save money. Number two, do what? Locate the car. Number three, visit the... Number four, number four interact with what? Car dealers. Number five, write letters to your relatives abroad. Number seven, get a license even though you don't have a car. Go to driving school. I mean, all these steps. I can come and share all these steps to you. But I am interested in the Holy Ghost. Oh. I mean, all these uh, steps, we, we know them. It's not like we don't know them or we don't know what to say. We know all these steps. Huh? Develop negotiating skills. What, what is that? I don't need to come to church to hear that. Come to get the Holy Ghost. After church, go and get a CD. Go and get a tape. Go and listen to something. Take it home with you. Read a book. Find yourself getting closer to God and to the anointing. And you'll be surprised. Some of these my Bible students, I, I know one day I will see some of them at some places. And they'll say, Bishop, do you know who I am? I, say, I don't know who you are. I, say, uh -huh. I am from your school many years ago. So that, yeah, I was trained there. You see, it shall come to pass really in life. So, Ezekiel said, in Ezekiel 2, 2, he said, The Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. Let God speak to you. Let him be speaking to you all the time. God has chosen a vessel through whom he will speak to you. Let God speak and be speaking to you. And I know that your life will never be the same. Stand to your feet, everybody. Leave love notes. Hmm. Uh, lift your hands up. Pray for the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more will your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts?
give the Holy Spirit to those who ask for the Holy Spirit. Father, we are thankful. We are grateful. We are loving you. We are thanking you. Holy Spirit, make a difference in our intelligence, in our capabilities, in our accomplishments, in all that we do and all that we say. We are thanking you and we are praising you. We love you, O God, and we thank you. Father, fill us. No matter the work we do, fill us, Lord. We want the helper. We want the, the, the advocate. We want the comforter to come and encourage us in our weak times and our weak moments. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We need you. We pray for you. Come into this church. Help our weaknesses. Help our deficiencies. Holy Spirit, anoint us. Holy Spirit, come, Lord. Come. We are praying for you. We want you to come like you fell on those people who are listening to Peter. When we are listening, Lord, let the Holy Spirit fall on us. Oh God, come, come. We are praying. We are praying in the name of Jesus. Give us the Holy Spirit. Thank you for a revival. Thank you for a revival. Thank you for a resurrection of your power in our lives. We give you praise. We give you thanks, oh God, for your great honor and love you have given to us. In Jesus' name. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, you are here, you are not a born again Christian. You want to give your life to God today. I want to pray for you and with you as you give your life to God, to Jesus Christ. If you are here like that, you want to give your life to God, you want to give your life to Jesus, just lift up your right hand. Where, just where you are standing, just lift up your hand there and I'm going to pray with you. God bless. Just your right hand up high. Pastor, pray with me please. I want to give my life to God. And I want to be a new person. I want my sins to be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you are here like that, lift it up high. Thank you. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Now, if you have lifted your hand, I want you to come to me in the front here. Come from where you are standing. I want to pray for you right here. Come all the way from the back. Come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, my friend, come. Come to God. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come, Alabada Shandalaba. Come, Alabada Shandalaba Dalaba. Palemenen de Lebeki Mandalama Mandelebeki Maralama Mandel. God bless you, my friend. God bless you, my brother. Come, Asando Loboko. Come to Jesus tonight. God wants to save you. God wants to wash you. God wants to make you a new person by the power of the blood of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit bring you. Lift your hands and pray with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, tonight is my night. Please forgive me for all my sins. Oh God. I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. Please cleanse me with your precious blood. Please wash away my sins with the blood of Jesus Christ. From today, I give my heart, I give my soul, I give my everything to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Please write my name. Please write my name. In the book of life from today from today i belong to god i belong to jesus christ thank you father in jesus name amen and amen and amen and amen give the lord a mighty clap offering hallelujah oh jesus thank you oh jesus thank you oh jesus thank you oh jesus thank you hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, five of you. If you see one of our young lady pastors right here, she's going to pray with you and give you a present from me. And to just go with her now, God is going to change your life. Oh, give the Lord a mighty, 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 mighty clap offering. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Wow, how many are blessed tonight? How many are glad to be here? Amen.
How many are going to look for the Holy Spirit everywhere? Let's pray for the Holy Spirit every day. Let's call on God. Please fill me. Fill no matter who you are, where, where you are preaching this life. Pray for the Holy Spirit. God is going to bless you with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to receive an offering tonight. Amen. And then we are going to go into the ecclesiastical service. Hallelujah. All right. Now, give me a basket. I want to receive a special offering today of 10 Ghana CDs. In fact, if you don't have new Ghana CDs, don't come. This is new Ghana CDs. 10 Ghana CDs. God bless you. Oh, Oko is the first person to give an offering. 10 Ghana CDs. Wow. 10 Ghana CDs. God bless you. Oh, how much is this one? Two fives. Hey. And this one is what? Ten ones. New Ghana CDs. Ah, Lord, let our offering increase. Please, if you are holding old CDs, don't come here. This is not a time for old money. And this one is what? One, 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 one. Ten. Wow. This is a special offering in new currency. Wow. Ten Ghana cities. Oh, God bless you. Ten Ghana cities. Oh, NLA Coco, ten cities. It doesn't look like much, isn't it? It's heavy. Ten cities, strong money. Oh, let God bless you as you give. Sister, open your palm. Is it a real Ghana, new Ghana? Okay, I'm not allowing old CDs at this time. God bless you. Wonderful. Ten Ghana CDs. Wow. Oh, in fact, this is what we call psychedelic money. New Ghanaian CDs. Oh, believe God at least ten Ghanaian CDs. Is there anybody who would like to give 20 Ghana CDs? <laughs> Look, you have to be careful with the new money. You can get finished. Oh. Before you realize, you see that you don't have anything. <laughs> hey! Now the thing is like dollar. Ten Ghanaian cities or twenty Ghana cities. Please, how much are you giving? 20 cities. Oh, God bless you, sister. Look at 20 cities. Look, tell the person, let God touch you. Go and give new Ghana City 20. So that something new will happen to your life. Something new. Look, if you have 50 Ghana cities to bring it now. Is there 50? So after 20, we go to what? 50. Wow. Ghana is born again, I tell you. <laughs> the basket is empty, Brian. The value is the same. There is no change in value. Hey. Okay, now, all Ghana cities bring 100,000 old Ghana cities. Okay. If you have 100,000 old Ghana cities, come. Brother, you have old cities. Look, make sure you leave all your old cities in the church. God bless you. Oh, this one is very, very old, but look. Look at that. Very, 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 very old. Compared with this one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, why are there? Why are there? Look, 100,000 or 200,000. Leave all your old money in the church. You don't need it again. God is going to give you new money tomorrow. Oh, 100,000. Oh, today being the 3rd of July, I was expecting that. 
God will touch your heart to give a better offering. Oh, God bless you. Old Ghana cities. It's not bad. Old Ghana cities. Look, empty your purse. Empty your purse. God bless you. Old Ghanaian cities are still valuable. Wow. From Saudi Arabia. Old Ghanaian cities are also welcome. 100,000 tonight. Please hurry up and let's give a good offering. Listen, I've decided to suspend that building over there because I've, I feel that I want to leave it to you to build. So the church is not going to bring any money again to finish that place. God bless you. Okay, so that, that building there, although it's outside is white, inside is black. There's nothing there. So we are closing it. When you want to build it, you bring money. We buy tiles, we do whatever. I think the church has tried. Other churches need even just a foundation and a roof. So I think we are okay here. What do you think? Huh? Say amen loudly or, or something. Yeah. It's enough. So if you go inside, you see there's not cement, there's nothing there. Yeah. So others for chop some. It's time to. All right. Now. New Ghana cities. Five. Five Ghana cities, how much? 50,000. Okay, so now, five Ghana cities. You want to give five Ghana cities. Have a new basket. Look, Rosemary, you better make some new basket for the new money, okay? New colors. Is it new Ghana city? All right. But Pastor Shman, why didn't you give ten? Go and bring the other five. Go and bring the other five. I'm disappointed in you. Pastor Eshmael, you are, you, are, you are lowering your, your diocese. Five Ghana cities. God bless you. We are only receiving new Ghana. Let's get some blue baskets and yellow. God bless you. New Ghana cities. Hey. Now the whole church is offering will go into only this basket. Hey. Tell the person next to you, you better go for something new. As you plant a new seed, something new is going to be triggered in your life. So, did you all go to the bank today? You went to the uh, ATM. Okay. Wow. So, if you had two million in the bank, it would suddenly change to two hundred. <laughs> Okay. This thing is going to take us some time to get used to it. Five cities. Five Ghana cities. And two Ghana cities now. Two, I'm going to take new Ghana cities and I'll come to old Ghana cities. Two Ghana cities. And one city. Hey. Two cities and one city, please. Come and give. Two cities and one city. Please, it's only new currency we are receiving now. If you are holding old money, you wait. Two cities and one city. The red one is what? One city. Hey, now the red is filling the basket. Two cities and one city. Believe God and arrive in the front. Wow. Spirit, wow. One city. Two cities and one city. If you have some pledge, first and best envelope, anything, bring it now. Two cities and one city. Ghana, new cities. Two cities and one city. Are there new coins as well? Hey, is it in the basket? This 
Thousand. You are counting what? What is this? Okay, you, you count. How, how many are you giving? Five of what? Fifty. That's two hundred and fifty pesos, which is what? Twenty-five thousand. Wow. Okay, hurry up. Twenty pesos and ten pesos. That's what. Two thousand, one thousand. 20p and 1 uh, 10p. And after that, what? 1p. Look, bring any coins, boosters. In. No, we are going to take a booster, real booster. Okay. Now, all Ghana cities. You gave 50,000, 100,000. I want to give 50,000 ring. God bless you. This is what new Ghana City. Put it here. This one. We are bringing old wine into new wine skins. Right. We want to take 20,000 CDs. I think I'm not comfortable with this 20,000. 20,000. 50,000. Yeah. Please, you want to give 50,000 or 20,000? Oh. Give your offering 20,000, 50,000 quickly. Please, can you come quickly? Please, 20,000, 10,000. Everybody should come and give an offering. Please, don't sit in the church and not give. An it's a crime, it's a crime not to give. Why don't you have you see the you back in the back? Those of you who work in the bank, you didn't know or care to you to come and give some to your pastor as a souvenir. By now, I'll be rich. I'll have received souvenirs from everybody. Nobody in the bank has come to give me even what I want to give. Father, forgive them. All Ghana cities. 5,000, 2,000, 1,000. Everybody, 5,000, 2,000, 1,000. Anything you have, bring it. Please. And then we are going to take boosters. Boosters in new Ghana cities and boosters in old Ghana cities. Within one month, there will be no old Ghana cities again. Huh? That's what I think. Within one month, there will be no old Ghana cities again. Get ready to cry now. Twenty thousand.
All right. Everybody take out a booster. Boosters. What is a booster? Two Ghana CDs, one Ghana CD. That's 10,000. 50 pesos, 20 pesos, 10 P, 1 P, anything. Even one Ghana CD is a booster. Yes, that's it. Bishop Sly, have you got a booster? Oh, what is that? One of the new coins. Lift it up and let's pray. Father, we thank you for this offering. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Ashes, receive the offering.